Wonderful. <laughs> Wonderful. Great. Fantastic. Oh, super. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bad news. We got an offer on the house. You did? Who? That nice couple with the Bijon Frise. Ugh. The dentist and his wife? Yes, you remember the fellow with the gold chain and his wife with the apricot colored hair? You aren't going to socialize with the mother. You're just going to accept their offer. I am. It's practically asking price. And by practically, you mean less than the asking price. 20% down, 60 day escrow, first time buyers, which means it's not contingent on anything. Their credit is great. This is a good deal. I really want the asking price. Mom, I don't think you realize how hard I've been working to try and sell this place. It's a very depressed market. Yes, I do appreciate your energy and enthusiasm. One would think there were bodies in the basement. We're accepting this offer. And speaking of basements, there's some stuff you have to start moving down there. There are things from your college years. Mother. Oh, you know, there's a lamp down there I've always liked. The big brass kind of antique looking thing. This is not an estate sale, Jillian. I'm not dead yet. Nancy's on her way over here with the paperwork. We are accepting this offer. No, I am not. Why? Because this is my home. This is where my family was born and raised, and I'm not going to sell it to people I do not like for less money than I want. You know what? Fine. Do what you want. Even though I happen to know a little bit about this subject because I've done hours and hours of research, and even though I have a degree in economics and run my own business, I'm taking myself entirely out of the equation. Good luck. I think he's mad at you. Yes, I sensed that. It's not easy for him. What isn't? Being in this family. What? Oh, for heaven's sake. Not easy being in any family. Feels everyone ignores his contribution. That's all I'm saying. Oh, well, that's preposterous. What can I do to make it better? Let him sell your house. Take the offer. But I do not want the offer. You asked. It's my house. Those, those Mary and Ashley Kate videos over and over again. It's Mary Kate and Ashley, and I won at Austin Powers. You're too young for Austin Powers. You think I'm too young for everything? That is not true. Cleaning your room, for example. Why can't I do cheerleading? Because I said so. That's not a real answer. Because you're too busy. Because you're too smart. Because cheerleaders are, are sheep. How about that? Visha was a cheerleader. There you go. If I lived with Daddy and Visha... You're not going there, Lauren. I'm not talking to you anymore. What's the big idea? Mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> give me a sec. Okay, that children are our future. Okay, not really a big idea, but it sounds big when Whitney Houston sings. Where are all my forks? Ta-da. What the hell is that? That's me working the program. My sponsor. The comedy free comedian. He says my high power is going to be very disappointed if I don't let every teaching hospital in the tri-state area kick my ass in writing. So, six rejections, ten more to go. It's pretty impressive, huh? No, sad, really. Yeah, well, that works, too. Do me a favor, I'm supposed to see Martin later today. Pose in front of the wall of shame for me. Uh, uh, Come on, it'll add color, like, like, like Vanna White in a big wheel.
Mr. Duran, is everything all right? You know me, Maxine. I don't come to you for every little thing. Yes, as a matter of fact, you are my most self-reliant foster parent, which is why I'm having baseball cards printed up with your picture on it. I'm just saying... No, that's, that's I know. <laughs> What's going on with Jimmy? They threw him out of school. Suspended? Expelled. Why? Janitor caught him breaking into the school at night. He was in the shop class messing around with tools. I don't know. <laughs> Kid's lucky he didn't get arrested. What does Jimmy have to say for himself? You kidding? He barely speaks. Did you talk with his psychiatrist? He won't see the doctor anymore. He refuses to go. Listen, I realize this kid has been through some no, stuff. Hell is what he's been through, Phil. This boy was locked in a basement. When we found him, he was shackled to a hot water heater, and he hadn't eaten in three days. I read the file, Maxine. I don't need the lecture. No, uh, it, it's not you, Phil. Jimmy doesn't talk to anyone, but he needs a home. And what I'm saying is maybe it should be someone else's. What we have here is a motion to reconsider a custody order that was first issued, uh, is this right, ten years ago? There were extenuating circumstances, Your Honor. Extenuating circumstances? Where I come from, we call that kidnapping. In 1992, my client Lucy Parnell, then 17 years old, gave birth to a boy, Joel. Her parents, dead set against her keeping the baby, pressured her into putting the baby up for adoption. And when that didn't work, they deceived her into signing the consent form. Deceived how? I didn't know what I was signing. Yes, apparently Ms. Parnell signed this particular form while blindfolded. Ms. Parnell had 29 hours of labor followed by an emergency C-section. She was on a morphine drip, exhausted and semi-delirious. But when I woke up the next day and asked to see Joel, I was told that he had been adopted. Two days after he was born, Mitchell and Jean Collins, the adoptive parents, took him home. My clients were unaware of any deception. They were told that the birth mother had affirmed and reaffirmed consent to give up her baby. The judge saw it differently. Ms. Parnell sued for custody of Joel and won. The judge ruled that Joel should be turned over to Lucy. A judgment which my clients appealed. Yes, and rather than stick around long enough to lose the appeal, Mr. and Mrs. Collins packed up the baby, moved out of their house, and disappeared. They did not disappear, Your Honor. They moved. They changed their names. For ten years, no one could find them. They were in hiding. They did what they felt was best for the child. He wasn't their child. Where did you go? Douglas, Arizona. Which is where a private investigator hired by my client found them. The boy is in DCF custody? Yes, temporary, pending the outcome of this hearing. I see here that your clients have been charged with kidnapping. The state considers them a flight risk, Your Honor. Note the accessories. We're hoping that the charges will be dropped, Your Honor, again, pending the outcome of this hearing. How's that? Well, if you overturn the initial order and establish that my clients had custody of Joel all along... No grounds for kidnapping. I got it. My clients just want a chance to be heard. All right, well, I'll need time to go over this file, so I'll hear testimony... Tomorrow at 10.30. God, I missed hearing that. Vandalism, breaking and entering. Your principal could have called the police. What were you thinking, Jim? James? Do you know that uh, James is my second favorite name in all the world? You're not going to ask me, are you? All right, I'll tell you. <clears throat> Isaac. Isaac beats James by a hair. Of course, we don't meet Benny Isaacs these days, do we? I just want to use the tools. What tools? The jigsaw, soldering iron, high-pressure plastic molds. And why would you need uh, soldering iron and high-pressure plastic, what do you call it? All right, I would be uh, lying if I didn't say that you were starting to frighten me. What are you trying to make? robot excuse me a robot all right why I, I'm I'm fully prepared to sit here until we both grow roots do 
Do you have a TV in this place? Uh, this is what you're trying to build, one of these... Um... They're called battle bots. They seem to be smashing each other to bits. It's kind of the point. You see the guys steering them? They're the designers. And you're uh, trying to build one. Yeah. I'll be back, guys. Don't fill up on bread. Yo, Mike! Man, you ever heard of a hairnet? These guys are getting a bit of you in every bowl, man. Come on. Hey, Andale. Yo, we need more chili. Man, ease up on oregano, man. I'm getting complaints. All right? I need more forks, guys. Right hook. Hey, man, I know you, man. I don't think so. Oh, that was you. A few months back in the courthouse. You hit that skinny white boy with a right hook. Bam! Didn't even know it was coming. Now, you tell me that wasn't you? No. All right, well, tell me this. Did you get him on his button? You know the button, right? Right under the jawbone. You hit his button, you turn off his lights. It was a mistake. You got that right. Biggest mistake in his life. It was about a woman, wasn't it? He was playing in your house. I really don't want to talk about it. Oh, I got it, man. You know, like Superman, you know? <laughs> Keep the glasses on, right? Now, it's cool. So, what are you doing? Pulling community service? Me too. A little domestic dispute. Judge had it in for me. Yeah, I am. So I'm Richie. Richie Cunningham. The other Richie Cunningham. And you are? Busy. I got a lot of stuff. Hey, what's the problem here? No problem. You gonna help out or you gonna chit-chat? Because I got 50 hungry souls out there waiting on you, too. I'm just trying to make the new guy feel at home. You want to socialize, go bowling, understand? See, that was just wrong, man. He didn't have to come down on you like that. It's fine. Maybe I should go talk to him. Maybe you shouldn't. All right. You know, change your mind, huh? It's an excellent silent treatment, honey. You're getting really good at it. Okay, listen. Cheerleaders exist for two reasons. One, to gang up on the girls who are not cheerleaders and to make them feel bad about themselves. And two, well, you're not old enough for the second reason, but believe me, it is worse than the first. Besides, why do you want to be on the sidelines encouraging boys to play their games when you could be on the field playing a game yourself? Lauren, look before you answer that door. I'm Jillian. She speaks. Hey, sweetie. What's going on here? A whole lot of nothing. Jillian, you were in high school. Could you please explain to Lauren how awful cheerleaders are and how she doesn't want to be one of them? I was a cheerleader. <laughs> All right. Really? Was it fun? Did you love it? I did. I made some of my best friends cheerleading. I'm still in touch with some of them today. One summer, I went to cheerleading camp. I met girls from all over the world. I visited one of them in Norway. Mom, how many friends do you have in Norway? Oh, well, Peter says your mother was only a cheerleader for weeks, so oh, I don't God. think she would... What? Here we go. You were a cheerleader? Briefly. I don't believe it. You lied to me. I did not lie to you. I just, I just didn't tell you everything. I'm sorry. I didn't realize it was such an issue. I should go. No, I, I'm sorry. You, you came over for something, and I dragged you into this mess. This? This is nothing. Your mother and Peter trying to sell the house. Well, that's a mess. <laughs> oh, I know. Peter has an offer. Your mother won't budge. So he's pretending he's out of it, but he's up all night obsessing about it. He wants to help, and when Peter can't help, it's not pretty. But that's not why I'm here. It's Kyle. He sort of needs a favor if kyle needs a favor why isn't he here because he's convinced that you'd say no i told him he was wrong but then he did that thing where he kind of laughs at you without laughing at you and yeah yeah i know that thing and so well here i am 
You know that he's applying to residency programs, right? He needs a letter of reference. Kyle wants me to write his letter of reference. He says you know him better than anyone in the family. <laughs> so, what do you say? No. Hey. If Kyle wants me to write his letter of reference, then he can ask me himself. So, I can tell him you might? You can tell him that he'll never know until he asks. You can have a late now, Dean. I do not understand. Your school actually has an entire club devoted to these battle borgs? Battle bots. Uh, Jimmy seems to have an affinity for building them. That may well be, but the robotics club is uh, part of the AP physics program, which means it's only open to seniors. I don't know if you appreciate how hard it is to get this boy to open up. Um, when he started talking about these uh, contraptions, it was as if, uh, as if everything that he's experienced, the weight that he carries, melted away. You know, last year, the kids built a robot that had six-inch bayonets on one end and a pneumatic ram on the other. This year's model features a uh, razor-sharp buzzsaw. Charming. Half of these kids are going to MIT next year. They do this kind of thing for kicks. I trust them. You don't trust Jimmy? In my experience, uh, kids with Jimmy's history tend to act out. They're aggressive, and they're prone to violence. Now, come on, Mrs. Gray, this is your field. Do you disagree? Well, generally speaking, no, but every child is unique. And when we start putting them in categories, we start... I have make... liability issues to consider, and my resources are stretched thin enough as it is. But if you'd like to come down here every afternoon and supervise Jimmy... Dr. Then... Conley, I work for the government. Uh, my resources are thinner than yours. I'm not taking any chances. I don't want to see my school on the 6 o'clock news for all the wrong reasons. I'm sorry. Ms. Parnell, what do you do for a living? Waitressing, mostly. Bartending when I can find it. And uh, how much money do you make in a good year? Twenty, maybe twenty-one thousand. What about health insurance? This is ridiculous, Your Honor. Ms. Parnell's financial history isn't the issue. I assume that we're all after the same thing here, Your Honor, which is the best interest of the child. Finish up, Mr. Drettler. I don't have health insurance. I can't afford it. Yes, 10 years worth of private investigators' bills add up. Are we done? One more question. Uh, Ms. Parnell, given your lack of health insurance, how did you pay for two separate stints in rehab for alcohol dependency? Your Honor. Now we're done, Mr. Dredler. Where Where's the boy's father? Charlie? No idea. Last I heard, he was working in Texas. He wouldn't share custody? He didn't want to have anything to do with this. When they disappeared and nobody could find them, he said maybe it was for the best that I should just let it go, but... I, I couldn't do that. And when everybody stopped looking, I hired my own private investigators. When they found nothing, I hired another one. And when the money ran out, I worked double shifts so we could keep looking. I dreamed about Joel at night. And during the day, I'd look at the eyes of every boy I passed on the street, hoping I'd recognize him. Knowing I wouldn't. He was my baby. I held Joel after he was born, you know? He saw me. It was like, I, I made a promise to him. This is one of these um, good news, bad news situations. Starting tomorrow, you may go back to school, providing that you uh, don't go to school when it's actually closed. Is that clear? And uh, you will start seeing your therapist again, but you have to put the robot building on hold. Uh, give me something here so that I know that this conversation is not happening in my head. 
Okay. Fillmore High School has a long list of clubs you can join. There must be something else you're interested in, if you're looking for something to do. I'm not. Can I go? Jimmy, wait. James, just tell me about this robot that you want to build. Why? Because I'm asking. Everyone keeps adding bigger weapons to their robots. Spikes, chainsaws, you name it. Mine's different. Well, it looks like um, a turtle. <laughs> well, yeah, it's simple. It's just an engine and a shell. And everything goes inside the shell. Titanium, if I can find it. Kevlar, three, maybe four layers. So nothing gets through. Well, right. The chainsaws, they just bounce right off, wear themselves out. Well, this robot doesn't have to attack. It wins just by surviving. That's the theory. We'd had trouble conceiving. We went through fertility treatments for years. Seven, um, no, it was eight cycles, but it was painful and in the end unsuccessful. So we decided to adopt. We hired a lawyer who told us about a situation here in Hartford. Where were you living at the time? Greenwich, about an hour and a half away. But we found a hotel near the hospital and we went through the screening and signed all the paperwork. We were in the hospital, in the waiting room, when Joel was born. We met him in the nursery. And at what point did you find out about the baby's health problems? Your Honor, this is a custody hearing. The child's medical history isn't relevant. Maybe not, but what health problems? Joel was born with a hole in his heart. They called it a septal defect. Untreated, he wouldn't survive a year. He had open heart surgery when he was four days old. And then again, three months later. How is he now? He's perfect. He's great. I mean, uh, he still takes his medication and he has to see a specialist every two months just to check his progress. The doctors call it a full recovery. These are expensive operations, Your Honor. The health insurance covered half. Mr. and Mrs. Collins Your pay... Your point is made, Mr. Dredler. Mrs. Collins, why did you run? We didn't at first. We... we went to court. Uh, we thought there had been a mistake. No judge would take Joel away from us, not after all this time. After we almost lost him once. And then it turned out that there had been no mistake. And we might lose Joel after all. That's when we left. And were you aware that what you were doing was against the law? Do you have kids? Your Honor. What would you do if someone called you up out of the blue and told you they were going to take your child away and there was absolutely nothing you could do about it? How fast would you run? So I, um, listen, I just want to apologize for the other day. Excuse me? For what I said, I was out of line. I just thought we should clear the air. So are we cool? Yeah, we're cool. Great. Wait, wait. Um, we're not cool. I don't understand. You weren't out of line yesterday, so what exactly are you apologizing for? Huh? You know. I don't. 
listen, you work hard. It seems like you got your head on straight. I just, I don't want any misunderstandings here, okay? Nobody needs that. What are you doing? Nothing, man. What did you say to him? Hey, I did you a favor. All I did was I told him to lay off you. You don't need some jackass on a power trip pushing your buttons, man. I don't remember asking you for any favors. <laughs> hey, right up. This is me you're talking to. All right, king of the domestic dispute. I know what you're capable of. What I'm capable of? I was there. Ringside, baby. I saw it. You were in the middle of the courthouse. Five, six cops right there in the hallway, right in front of your eyes. It didn't even slow you down, man. Look, all I'm saying is that I know what that's like, all right? You and me, we're a couple of time bombs, baby. We gotta look out for each other. It was eighth grade, all right? All these really cool girls were cheerleading, and I wanted to be friends with them. So I practiced every day, and I tried out, and I got a spot. I was a cheerleader. Did you love it? Yeah. Yeah. For about a week. And then, during the first football game of the season, when we were doing the, um, the pyramid thing there was the whole kicking incident you kick someone no somebody kicked me in the ear <laughs> so i fell down and then we all fell down and the whole football team was laughing at us and they all blamed me and all of my new friends they all turned on me I got to see cheerleaders for what they really were. A bunch of silly girls? No. Total evil. Okay, Mom. Okay, maybe not total, but 80. 85% evil. Mom, I'm gonna be late. Just, just... Tell me why this is so important to you. Why do you want to do it so bad? I don't know. They get to wear cute shoes. Hi, Mom. Kyle, what are you doing here? I was waiting for you. I wanted to uh, catch you before you went to work. Did you hear the phone? I, uh, I didn't want to leave some long message on your phone. Yeah, well, you could always have Jillian leave the long message. Okay, that was a huge mistake. So, I mean, look, if you don't want to do this, I, I understand. Kyle, ask me. Will you write a letter of reference for me? Sure. <laughs> Great. Great. Okay, I, I realize you're busy, so this is what I've done. I've sort of, uh, kind of uh, written up um, samples for you. So everything from middle of the road to absolutely flowering. So if you want to take a look at those. No. What? No, if I'm going to write it, I'm going to write it. I don't need your samples. Okay, but you, you do realize that the goal here is to get me into a residency program. But a, a, a long, elaborate laundry list of my faults, that's not really going to do the trick here. Joel, this is Judge Gray. Hi, Joel. Can I get you anything to drink? We have the best vending machine in the courthouse. I'm okay. You can sit down if you like. Well, I guess this must be pretty strange for you. When can I go home? I want to see my mom and dad. I'm working on that, Joel. Now, you need to understand that the reason this is so complicated is because you have so many people who, who care very much about you. You understand? I guess so. Do you really? I don't know. I mean, they told me, but... What did they tell you? 
The day before our trip, we had this talk. They said I had a mom and dad before I had them. And that one of them, Lisa something. Right, Lucy. Lucy Parnell. She was looking for me. And what, she wants to visit me or something? Is that what they told you? No, I just figured. People don't always do the right thing, Joel. Even the very best people. And your parents... I know. They made a mistake. That's what they said. They called it a whopper. Yeah. It was. Lucy Parnell is your biological mother. She has been looking for you for 10 years. That's a long time. That's your whole life. I said she could visit me, Lucy. I said it was all right with me. I mean, I don't care. I could show her my room. I don't remember her. No, you wouldn't. You were just a little baby. If she visits, I don't know what I'm supposed to call her. Yeah. It's kind of the question, isn't it? That's what we're trying to figure out. And when you figure it out, I get to go home. Right? I just want to go home. I like the offer, Nancy. No, no, we're working on the counter. It, well, these things take time. Just give us a day. Or two. No, she's not having one of her fits. She's being very rational. <clears throat> uh, Nancy, I'll have to call you back. I'm sorry to barge in on you. Not a problem. That wasn't my house you were talking about. What's in the box? Do you remember, um, once upon a time, when you told me that your company was looking for pro bono opportunities. Wow. Six volt motor, airless drivetrain. These things are tough to find. Peter, I really need your help. It's very important. I'm a little bit busy right now. No, please, this is the kind of thing that you're so good at. Jimmy? James Secor, this is my son, Peter Gray. Jimmy is building... A battle bot, right? Aluminum hub wheels? Yeah, foam filled. Ah, oh, perfect. I mean, for combat wheels, but you gotta make sure they're protected, because once the wheels go, you're toast. Yeah, it's... I have some errands to run, so uh, why don't you two chat? What kind of RC unit are you using? Uh, dual stick, four channels. Oh, nice. Very smart. Keeping it simple. I slid the crimp on Well, um... I'll check in with you later, then. There's nothing worse than having one come up with All right, then. Oh, wow. We got a braided steel fuel line. Yeah, a guy at a bike shop gave it to me. Oh, cool. All right, all you need is one more gear differential, and you're in business. Hello? Um, I, um, I had some, um, DCF business upstairs, and... If, if this is a bad time... No, no. Come in. I understand that you're uh, having a cheerleading crisis with Lauren. I understand you're refusing to sell your house. I don't like the offer and I don't like the people. I don't like the cheerleaders. You don't have to, Amy. Peter says it's a perfectly good offer. Do you know that my father lived his whole life in the same house? Holmes used to, uh, mean something. I just, I can't stand the idea of that woman with the orange hair cooking on my stove. Where I've dried out numerous Thanksgiving dinners and, uh, and won the bicentennial crown rose. Or, uh, their bijon frisé peeing on my Berber carpet where you learn to crawl. Uh, but I am uh, starting a new life. I should, I should move on. I should, I should accept that offer and I should stop confusing the present with the past. 
I had this boy in here today. He was 10 years old. And he kept telling me, I just want to go home. And all I could think was, God, I know what that feels like. You didn't really have DCF business upstairs, did you? The motion in front of me, in case anyone forgot, is uh, still a motion to overturn a custody order that was first issued in this very courthouse. Ten years ago, you made a decision which people are still paying for today. I don't know if you realize how much damage you caused the very child that you were trying to help. A as far as I can tell, Mr. and Mrs. Collins, you have been caring, compassionate, and very giving to Joel. You have loved him and raised him as if he were your own boy. The problem, as it was 10 years ago, is that he is not your boy. When you defied the court order and fled the state with Joel, you knew it was wrong. And Mr. Drettler said the other day that we are all after the same thing here, and that is the best interest of the child. And, uh, and he's right. So, what is in Joel's? best interest. It is in his best interest to have a family that is not based on a lie. It is in his best interest to be allowed to receive a parent's love. A new mother makes a promise to her child. I will take care of you, she says. It is in his best interest that that promise be kept. Lucy Parnell had a right to raise her own child, just as Joel had a right to be raised by his own mother. When the plaintiffs took him away, they changed a family's history forever. No court can undo that loss, but I guess it has to try. I am ruling that full custody be granted immediately to, uh, to Lucy Parnell. Uh, I strongly encourage you, Ms. Parnell, to work with DCF and a pediatrician to work out a regimen of counseling for Joel. Mr. and Mrs. Collins, I would encourage you to make yourself available for extensive visitation. And, and to that end, Ms. Riley, the uh, very next thing I intend to do is to place a call to the ASA's office and in the strongest possible language, recommend that the kidnapping charges against Mr. and Mrs. Collins be dropped. It is in nobody's best interest to have them locked up. What they're about to lose is, is punishment enough.
We were doing well for a while. I mean, that thing took 20 or 30 hits. But then, watch this. Right here. Boom! We lost the shell and it was all over. How did Jimmy take it? Better than me, I cried like a baby. He's ready to rebuild. I'll get it. Hello? Grandma, you'll never guess what? What? I'm going to be cheerleader. You don't say. And the best thing, Taylor and Pippin are going to be cheerleaders, too. Oh, and look. <coughs> Uniforms. On Wednesdays, we get to warm to school. Well, what's better than that? <laughs> what are you watching? Oh, uh, it's these um, battle brats. Ask your brother. <laughs> That was Nancy. Hey, Amy. You're never going to believe this. We got a second offer on the house. You know what that means, don't you? It means we play them against each other, and before you know it, bidding war. But the best part is this buyer is motivated. She's a um, single mother with a strong income. That's good. And uh, she's willing to put down 25%. She has an excellent credit rating. The bank said she'll have absolutely no problem getting approved for the loan, and she wants to take possession as soon as possible. What do you say to that? I say, um, we should, we should go with the second buyer. You don't want to think about it? Uh, she sounds like our kind of people. All right, then. I'll call Nancy and tell her to close it. Grandma, how do I look? Oh, dear God. Betty, okay. We've got spirit. Yes, we do. We've got spirit. How about you? Is there anything to drink in the house? Uh, yes, dear, in the kitchen. I'll go get it. Want to see another one? No. Ready? Okay. We've got spirit. Have no fear. We've got spirit. Let's hear you cheer. Wow, that's a, that's a good one, honey. That's a really good rhyme. Come on, Mom. Do one with me. No. Just want my little cheer. You know, I would. I would, but I think I'd hold something. Coming up next on TNT's Prime Time in the Daytime. Who is responsible for a lawyer's death? Follow the evidence on Law and Order. <laughs>